Hi, welcome back to Engine Shop Joe. Tonight I wanted to talk about my favorite Cummins engine. And uh, I worked on a lot of different engines over the years. And this was by all, all stretch of the imagination, my absolute favorite. <clears throat> and speaking for myself, if I wanted to put a, a Cummins diesel engine in a pickup truck, or a, a off-road Jeep, something like that. <clears throat> and we could be talking about a nice repower for a street vehicle or something for off-road. I would choose the VP44 pump engine. So that would be the ISB 5.9 VP44. They made a VP30 that was a little less horsepower, that was industrial. The VP44 is what we saw on uh, back in 1999-1998 to 2000 and about four because that's when Common Rail came out. This was uh, if you had like a school bus or a box truck that needed between 200 and uh, 200, well even one 160 to 200 and 50 horse, this is what you got in it. Uh, they do pump it up to 275 on the industrial on the industrial calibration we use because it's in a, a small grove crane. But <clears throat> I thought it was an amazing engine. So I'm gonna talk about uh, the fuel system tonight. And then I'll talk about some other parts of the engine as time goes on. These may not all be right in a row, but uh, we're gonna talk about it. So let's get going. Let's start with uh, number one, which is at the fuel pump at the front of the engine. And number one is uh, representing the entire fuel pump. That pump bolts to the engine with four uh, nuts that go on four studs. The studs are in the gear housing. There's a bracket underneath. There's a couple different styles. It just depends on the generation that you have. It's not terribly easy to get off because of the bracket underneath and the one bolt up inside. Uh, down underneath the pump where you see there's a plate on the front of the gear housing. In uh, vehicles on the road, a lot of times there's an air compressor there. And then getting the pump off is a bear. <clears throat> and usually it's almost easier just to take the air compressor off to get the pump off. But on the, the front of the, the uh, gear housing, there's a tin cover and there's a uh, like a Phenolic cap, a screw cap that screws over a hole in, or into a hole in the cover and you take that cap off and there's a big nut and that holds the pump onto a gear. It's got a tapered shaft and the gear is tapered. So that's uh, what holds the shaft to the gear train so it doesn't slip. There is a key in the pump. It is not made to hold the pump from a shaft from slipping. It's a timing key. If you uh, drop the pump and the key pops out, you better know how it went in. There's a little arrow on it. It could go either way. If you put it in backwards, you'll have nothing but timing faults because that key is um, selected when it's on a fuel stand being timed. The gear that it goes in when you pull the pump off you just roll the engine around, there's a line engraved into the gear, like a scribe line from the teeth down to the center, almost like a, a very thin milled line, a machined line, and that you have that face up, and that means the keys face up, because that's in line with the keyway. You always remove the pump with the keyway up, so if the key got loose, it doesn't fall into the front cover in the gear train, because then you will be taking that apart. And if you don't, and it got into the gear teeth, you will be taking the engine out of the vehicle and putting a gear train in it. So, uh, number one is the pump. You know about mounting. Number two is the plug on the back of the pump. And that comes from the engine harness. This pump is completely controlled by the ECM. Inside that plug, there's a power and a ground. There's an emergency stop pin. There's a fast idle pin, that's the diagnostic pin. 
and there's a couple data pins because the pump's throttle is run by a data, a data stream. Back to uh, number three, that or down to number three, that is the fuel inlet to the pump. Number four is a fuel outlet. That line goes all the way back behind the fuel filter number six in the middle of the engine to the end of the engine. You see number five back in the back, and that's a T-block. That's a return block, and that what looks like a bolt right, right to the left of number five is a screw-in check valve that's got a spring and ball in it, and it maintains about 10 PSI in the return line so that you have uh, sufficient pressure inside the pump for starting. You do not want to raise the pressure inside the pump much over 10 PSI. I think if you get up over about 15 or 16 PSI, the engine will not start because the high pressure pumping pistons will not be able to move because the overall pressure in the pump will be too high for them to um, return down to the cam. So if you have high fuel return back pressure, one of the symptoms is the engine's very hard to start. Okay, so let's move on from number five to number six. That is the on-engine fuel filter. It is a cartridge filter. Number eight is a screw-in top. It's a phenolic or resin top, just like the, the cover on the front of the engine over the fuel pump to gear nut. And that screws out. There's an O-ring on it. When we would change the fuel filter, we would leave that loose and flip the key on. Or down at number 13, the electric lift pump, we plug our own plug in, hook a couple leads on a battery, and we had a little switch we could flip on to make that pump run and that would fill that filter because 13 the lift pump pumps fuel right up to the fuel filter can up at the top there on the back side right above number seven there's a banjo fitting that's from that line off of 13 and that fills that aluminum housing number six up and as soon as fuel started to come out uh, by the o-ring we would flip the switch off and tighten that number eight cover and there's a big plastic cast nut on top of it so that you could put a ratchet on it or, or a crescent wrench or a big set of pliers to get it loose. Number 11, which you can't see it, it's behind the dipstick there. This is a flat blocking plate, but there was an option in some cases where there was a uh, fuel heater there. So there'd be a wire connection there. Down at number 10 is the water and fuel sensor. The plug that would plug into that, uh, the receptacle port is behind the dipstick. You can't see it. Number nine is the, uh, the banjo fitting that goes out of that housing down to number three to feed clean fuel into the injection pump. Uh, number 11 we talked about. Number 12 is the high pressure injection lines. One of the reasons that I like this fuel system is the pressure range is, is about 2,500 to 3,200 PSI up at the injectors. So if you uh, have a line that's got a problem or when you're starting the engine, and it's idling and it's missing real bad because there's air in it, and these can be a bugger to get air out of, you can safely take those nuts loose on the fuel lines. In fact, I would, when I put a pump on an engine, I'd always leave the easiest three to get to about a turn loose, and then that would help to get the air out of the pump. If you tighten all those lines and there's a lot of air in there, it can be difficult to get uh, the engine started and aerated. So that's what I used to do. Uh, again, number 13 is the lift pump, and that pumps about 10 PSI into the pump all day long, and this pump needs to have fuel pumped to it. If that lift pump 13 burns out, the injection pump number one, the assembly, does have the ability to pull fuel, but it will quickly be damaged. So you want to make sure that you don't lose your fuel pressure 
coming from pump number 13. It's an elect, like again, electric pump that the ECM runs. <clears throat> Fault code 278 is an open circuit to that. If you have that code active, you need to really not run this engine till you get that fixed. Uh, a lot of the injection pump failures happen because of the lift pump number 13 failing or not being, being able to pump fuel. If there's a problem or what the engine ECM would deem as an emergency, say you lost all your oil pressure or the water temperature went through the roof or it couldn't control the throttle on the pump because there is a feedback sensor in the pump that tells it RPM and then it's got a sensor in the bottom of the block. If you look down below number 13, the electric lift pump, just below that harness, you'll see what looks like a bolt and there is a, uh, and a bracket that's actually a crank pickup on the engine. That's the primary speed sensor. So if the engine overspeeds, <clears throat> the ECM will shut 13 off. That's part of what it does to try to protect the engine from overspeeding. It will also shut the pump down. It does that by opening a relay, number 15. Uh, there's an insert to the right of number 15. That is the VP44 relay. It comes on the engine harness. It's painted whatever color the harness is painted. Uh, they would mount them in all over the place in vehicles. They were supposed to be mounted so that that relay was hanging vertically like it's hanging here on the harness. And that's because it's a cap type relay and it would keep water from entering if you hung it like this. If it's upside down, say that tie broke and it was hanging upside down, they would typically fill up with water over time because even though there are rubber seals in the uh, harness where it enters the housing for the pins, they're not always completely watertight and you have air pressure and vacuum from hot and cold that build in that housing because there is a seal between that relay and the relays in a shroud that seals to the connector that has the wires in it. So I've seen them filled with water and then of course you, and you end up with it all kinds of faults or the engine doesn't want to run. Uh, again, that relay, if it doesn't turn on, the engine will not start because that is primary computer power for go back to the pump number one, which also happens to be the processor bolted on top of the pump. The processor is not street changeable. It has to be done on a pump stand. I tried to change one and I muffed up the harness. The harness is a, that goes down into the pump is a mylar strip. It looks like plastic with lines inside of it, like a computer board. And uh, you have to have special tools to get that in place and put in correctly. So that's the fuel system on here uh, in a nutshell. And again, it'll go to 275 horse. It idles nice. You notice this ECM has two ports on it. Uh, the port right above 14 has no plug. That would be the OEM port. And the port on the back there that's got the, the harness. It's unplugged, but there's a harness there. That's the engine port. Um, <clears throat> typic typically, on a, like a Dodge pickup that had this fuel system in it, the ECM would have one plug because it, they made it more... Non -com I'm going to call it non-commercial friendly. And the thing about the, uh, and that ECM has one plug on it, not two. And the thing about that ECM, the Dodge ECM, I'm going to call it the Dodge ECM, is that you have to have the right calibration in that ECM for tire size, rear end ratio, final transmission drive ratio, horsepower, any options that have to run through the ECM, all of that has to be built in the calibration. So there was many, many calibrations from Dodge. And I had a guy come in one time, and a, a long time ago when he first came out, we could actually connect to the, to the Dodge trucks, and we could, we could calibrate them. And there was hundreds of calibrations and, and a guy sent his buddy in and his buddy had bought bigger tires, bigger diameter tires and put them on the truck. 
And of course, his speedometer was off. The transmission wasn't shifting right. So he called a friend of his up at uh, Dodge in, in uh, Michigan, and they looked up the calibration that he needed for the tire size that he bought and gave it to him. And he, he came down and I, um, the, I was working at Cummins. Cummins billed him for me to put that calibration in the ECM, and then everything worked. The nice thing about this ECM is it's custom programmable. So if I took this engine and stuck it in a pickup truck, I can go in, I got to do a couple math formulas, but I can go in and I can put in uh, tire, they call it tire revs, not tire size. And that's how many, how many rotations, 360 degrees is, of turning is one rotation. How many rotations the tire makes in one exact physical mile, that's what the tire revs are. So I could put in the rear end ratio, I could put in the tire revs, I can set up cruise control, I can add some switches for functions. If I want to change tires, I can put bigger tires, smaller tires, I can throw a different rear end ratio in it. And with a few mouse clicks, I'm good to go. If it was a Dodge ECM, I have to know somebody to go look that up for me inside of uh, the Dodge company. And this was years ago. I don't know if they still do this. You know, we're talking about back in, t in the year 2000-ish. And you had to have somebody that could go look that up because we did not have access to it. We had access to the calibrations, but not what the internal uh, adjustments were. That was part of the, uh, the you know, the Dodge... Uh, Dodge's own system. So anyway, uh, this would be my baby. That's what I'd have. And it was it's very easy to work on. And uh, I'll go over the rest of the engine on the pitfalls and the pluses of it. But it was a beautiful design. And it I thought it had a beautiful fuel system. And the common rail engine that replaced it, which is the 6.7 we have today, it's a darn good engine and the fuel system's it, it, it works. It's great. Uh, everything has its caveats, you know, its pluses and its minuses. Uh, being an old school mechanic, I happen to like lower pressure fuel systems. I work on the high pressure ones all the time. I'm not afraid of them. Uh, you respect them. If you don't respect them, they'll kill you. They can kill you, I should say. Uh, this fuel system, you could get dosed with fuel pretty good if you don't respect it. But I don't know of anybody that actually died because they had uh, pressures that were so high that the fuel got into their in their bloodstream. But anyway, thanks for joining me in Engine Shop Joe. And there'll be more on this engine, my baby, coming up.